Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at an inspection, a pre-inspection on the car. So I know there's some defects on here. Kelly's already spotted some in the last episode just whilst washing it, but now I've got it inside dried and some decent lighting. So have a quick wander around and see what a brand new car comes with from the factory. So yeah, you take it away, Kelly. Let's have a look. Yep, we're going to work around the car. We're going to start with a paint depth reading or paint thickness gauge first. We discussed earlier, this is a very expensive gauge, but you can buy cheaper ones. Mm -hmm. What one have you got, John? If you've got, a, I've got one. You've got one of these, have you? Okay. So I, this is very handy. It's on a cord, so it means it's really easy to show the camera and hold it. But you've yeah. got the ones you just hold a little handheld, isn't it? Well, and they're like hundreds. Yeah. Well, well, you've got the cheaper ones. Correct. Next gen ones. Yeah. Yes. Matt, what one have you I've got? I've got the paint detective. Is it PD8? Yeah. It's called? yeah. So. So I'll have hundreds. But more importantly, this doesn't tell you a lot. All I ever use one of these gauges for is to see if there's a discrepancy from one panel to another of mm. like double or half. So it's, you can tell it's had a repaint. Yeah. Now, because you asked Miss earlier, would you ask, would you have a new person have one of these? I say yes. Mm -hmm. I rarely use one of these to physically look for a car that's been painted or not, because I can see where parts, I know yeah. where to look. Yeah. Straight on the edge there, I don't lift the rubber out, it'd be dry or have a masking line. I can see when it's been painted or not. Good tool, really handy. It doesn't measure the clear coat on top. There's a separate layer. There's a different gauge that does, which I do keep. But it's just, you've probably seen that I've, in other videos or methods. I use a laser light pointer on one area, then polish. And if you've got 128 and it says 126, you've taken two microns yeah. of clear coat yeah. off. So let's just quickly scan around the vehicle. We're looking for big changes between one panel and another. That's all we're looking for. As you see, that's only 10 microns, that's not big enough. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to be careful when checking like this, even whatever gauge you use, because I have seen cars where there's a join line there. In actual fact, we did it once on an R8, where this top half was damaged, we just want to keep it localised, yeah. so we use this edge as a join line for clear coat. So ideally, I would be trying to do, I thought one in the middle, one at the top, then one in the, on each part, so about four or five per panel. Just in case you're, you're not getting a sort of random bit there. Now, so far it all looks fine. So I'm just going to keep it above the swage line, below the swage line. So as you can see, it's all similar. We'll do them on the roof. So it's difficult to say that is genuine paint. Now, it's a brand new car. We've seen no overspray and it's all reading the same. Yeah. So it is. So why did I say it's difficult? We had a customer that turned up with his R, RS4, a deer, I think I'm looking at Jay the cameraman, I thought it was a deer, ran into the side of his door, damaged two doors, and said, can you paint those two doors? Not only do you want the colour match perfect, I want it to read exactly what it would at the factory. Oh. We did. If you know what to do and you know how to do it, you can. So basically it was undetectable because if you could come along one of these and measure it, and I got it absolutely bang on, you could not see the difference. You saw the fluctuation of 10 microns yeah. per panel. So we, there's no way of knowing the way it was built. You'd have to physically strip the door down to probably see it's got more paint on the inside of the panel than the original. Yeah. So you're not yeah. going to do that. Yeah. So this is a gauge with common sense. It's a new car. We can't do your tailgate boot lids because it's plastic. It doesn't work. It's yeah. plastic. So then we'd have to use the ultrasound version of this, which is a long-winded gauge, and that only comes as a very expensive yes. gauge. So I'll hold yeah. this up in the air around here, so you can see 118 again, 124. So it's quite good news that there's no, what looks like repairs anywhere, 116, yeah. 114. So I wasn't expecting to see anything wrong with this. I, I, to be fair, we got the, it's very consistent, 122, 126, wherever we go with this. So as you can see, which is quite a nice thing to know, yeah. 122. So that's showing that I can't see any repairs or, or notice any of that, and we haven't seen any repairs. Yeah. Outside when we washed it, I didn't see any repairs. So all we're gonna do now, I'm gonna almost call this a detailed mistake of just a spotlight. Cause, what I was doing earlier, I'm just yeah, because <laughs> if I was to, let's go and get my remotes for the lights. Yep. 
Let's turn certain lights off. So bear with me because I can't remember which ones it's going to be. So let's start with them all off. And now, so we'll do, hmm. so we've just got the strip lamps on now. Now we've got no spotlights. And when we looked earlier, we saw some defects in there. And what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to pick up what I call my little Kelly cam mm -hmm. video setup, which is different camera, lens and style to what we use for making the videos like that camera there, what Jay's yep. got. So we're going to get in close, but we've already seen and noticed lots of dots and fallout. Yeah. And some, it looks like a paint defect, like a, a bit of dirt in the paint. I think that's a silicon. Could be etching. This is etching. Now, we did say that when we put that on, we can't see that yeah. anymore. And mm. now, and you ask me, is it because it's fluorescent or is it LED? Uh, all we're looking at there, ignore if it's an LED bulb or mm. a fluorescent bulb. It's a strip lamp, which we know because it's a straight line. If I was to put this car over there in the inspection area and put on the big square lights, so it's like a light box. Yeah, exactly. In the middle of the, the light, you can't see any defects because it's flood, flood lit. Mm. Same as outside. If you notice now, I'm going to explain, when you move your head and you pick a defect up, put that defect square in the middle of the bulb, does it disappear? So you can, the little dot, put it right in the middle of the light. Hopefully you'll see it, it goes. Yeah. You can't see it. When can you see it? When it's on the edge between the lit area and the non-lit, so the light and not light. Can you see that, John? Mm -hmm. So the only time you can see it well is when you're, you transition and you move the bulb across. So it's the edge of the box again. It yep. literally is the edge of the outline of the yeah. light. Where's the edge of a bulb? Mm. It's difficult, isn't it? Because yeah. this is, there is a bulb circle, but then there's a bright light around it. Yes. So there's no sharp on and off boundary of light. Yeah. So those light box ones, or them square lamps, they're fine if there's a space between them, which is what I've got, there's a space. Yep. The moment you put them tightly packed together and make one big floodlight, mm. you actually lose any ability to see defects because you've just got one floodlight. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I can pick up like that defect. That defect is easy to see all the time, yeah. but some of the defects are much harder to spot when the light is there. Yeah. So if this is really bright in here, yeah. yeah, but once that, once that one you just looked at, I got the square on, I'm almost using one eye. Yeah. When I go to the edge and move side to side, that is a really hard thing to capture yeah. on camera. Because oh, of the, <laughs> so round here, yeah. what I'm, so when we use a light, what we're looking for is swells. Oh, it's quite funny because whoever watched this side? John. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, but look. That, going back to your last video, I'm sure you said that if you missed the middle bit, you did. it didn't matter. I don't care if one of my staff members was to wash the car and the middle of the panel was still dirty. That's I just said I, it doesn't that's matter. What, that's what I did. It yeah. doesn't matter. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Well covered, well covered. Because yeah. <laughs> we're going to IPA and clean it and then we're going to clay the yeah. car. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so actually, what you'd see, if you ever saw a KDS video, before we take an inspection, we'll make sure we checked it with a light, yeah. gone round and alcohol cleaned everywhere, then we've got the true finish. That doesn't actually matter, that dirt there. That doesn't matter. <laughs> what, what matters is, so you said to me earlier, the light's too close, it's floodlight. You're sort of right, but that mm. wasn't the reason why you could see it at the strip lamp. The moment you pull the light further away, it's easier. Yep. So of course, yeah. imagine with someone what were you if they're working a the drive. Imagine yeah. working in a little garage and it up close like this. It all looks great. It is a pain. <laughs> so you said about the brightness. And people are saying, what Kelvins, what lumens? The biggest problem is, if this was a silver or white car, I'd have to get this light and stand right over against that wall yes. to have about the right sort of reflection of light back so it doesn't hurt my eyes and I don't dilate and don't adjust. So I can see black absorbs the light. Mm. So I can get really close and still see the defects, but I'd have to get further and further away and do that on a silver or white yeah. car. So silver and white cars, I still got as many swells, but people go out there and go, they're holding the same, yeah, the same distance yeah. from a dark car. And what they're searching for, I think Flex make a lot over there, one with adjustable lumens. Mm. But the problem is, you've got to try and educate someone. What's the distance? Yeah. What colours the car? And then tell them what lumens. It becomes like a chart form. Yeah. Just move the light further away or turn the light up and down. Yeah. yeah. So, 
We did notice that there. Yep. Mm -hmm. We've got some strange marks there. We've got some damage on the tail lights there. Um, the and really, is, oh, there's a bit around here, I think, somewhere on the corner. Yeah. This yep. that, like just there. tiny. It's tiny. Yeah. Yep, so what I'll do, I'm going to get my Kelly cam and I'm probably going to ask John or you, Matt, to hold the camera. So let's just capture this so that the people that, hold that, so the people that are watching this can actually see what we can see. So I'll get my little Canon camera. This is going to be a little bit tricky because the person holding the light has got the light in the right place. Mm -hmm. And the reason yeah. I try to make this, light, this portable lightweight one is so I can do it one-handed. Oh, let's start back here. Come on, let's go around here. Why not start? So we've got... Yeah, I grab my camera. John, you can be the light man. You be the light man. Then. Fantastic. You're the props man. <laughs> props man. So, that's it, say there, John. Where so what we've got, I'm going to press record. <clears throat> and now I can zoom in. There it is, look. So what we got is some deeper defects. Oh, yeah, I like the light. There you go. So we've got some defects on the bonnet there. And then... We're not sure if that is actually, this one is. There's a interesting sort of scratch line there, we can see. There's a scratch line, so let's go down the car, John. And we got, so let's, got this, let's capture this marring. So if you move the light, that's it. So as I, I might even adjust the white balance there. There you go. And you can see, I've adjusted the white balance now. Matt, if you have a look what I'm doing. Sorry. So what I'm doing, I'm adjusting the sort of exposure. Yeah. So as it's dull, and I can adjust the exposure, and what we're getting there is you can get to see the defects easier. So I leave this camera on a manual exposure because it's easier to highlight the defects. Yeah. Right. Thanks, John. Let's go on to the next door. So that, that's, that's a sort of what we call marring. It could be wash marring or a chemical or a wax marring or a product marring. It's very, very light marks mm. that you can see when I change the exposure. If I zoom in, you can see there, it's really, really faint. Is it, John? Yep. It's really faint. That shows to me this paint's going to be very soft. Yeah. Of course, it's Japanese paint. It's a Honda. I'm more certain it's going to be soft. But if you see that on a car, then it's more likely to have soft paint. Let's carry on going around. So we've got the and same again. So let's capture that. I have to go up there. Now, if you look now on the screen, it's floodlit. I can't really capture anything. But the moment I start adjusting the exposure, wrong way, I can start to capture. If you move the light up, up this way, John, that's it. It's really faint. If I turn the light yeah, balance up, yeah. right. and you can just about make out the marks. Now. We can see that easier than the camera can. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can see that really easy. So, and hardest bit for details, anyway, is to try and capture the footage. Yeah. Now, this isn't the greatest lens, it's a small portable wall, but at least I can get in close compared to the sort of big rigs we've yeah. got. So, it will be much easier to see when we go around. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the top here, the sinkage. So, you need to turn the light off for that one, John. Cheers. <coughs> so, up here, what we've got, let's do the exposure. So we can see, you can see by adjusting the brightness, it's too far. What we've got now is there's this dullness on the roof or on this spoiler. There's a, there's a sort of almost, looks like overspray look when it isn't mm -hmm. overspray, which we're going to yeah. fix. So if we come around, we notice around here there's this, diff, it's a lovely damage. You put the light facing down further away, that's it. So here, there is some really bad scratch marks, defects on the rear light. And we've got the same here, there's a bit there, let's come, so let's go back out of there. That's it, you can see it, I, I can zoom in, wait for the focus, there it is there. Right in the middle of the shop, right there, there's some defects. So let's have a look down the side. Most of that's just normal. I'm going to zoom out just so you can see we can, what we're capturing. But um, can you turn your light on or off, John? It stops it flickering. Turn it back on, that's it. So what I'm going to do, we've got the same sort of marks there, some rubbing. And generally, the car isn't that bad. <laughs> it's just got a lot, almost like wash marring, yeah. marring, product marring. But you can see quite a lot down there on that door. Let's go around onto the bonnet. Ah, 
And there's this defect here, see if I can capture that. So take the light further away, John, and towards oh, yes. you. There we go, so the corner there. What we got, so you have to go around that way. That's it, that's perfect. So what we got, if I now adjust, we should be able to see, and there's this scratch line I'm just captured now by altering the exposure. I can actually see that now, and there's some marks there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cycle the camera. So what we're going to do is turn the light off, John. What we want to see, let's see if I can capture. So here we go, it's recording now. Can you see, there's some stain marks mm. or white marks. Mm -hmm. That could be just the towel, drag marks. But there's, you see little dots, can't you, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can zoom in closer. And now if I change the exposure, you can see how I could lose that, or maybe you can see it better. Look. Go on, magic. It depends the adjustment of exposure. Yeah. So I've got a manual focus rig, a yeah. manual exposure, a larger screen so I can see it easier, and made it as compact as, as possible. Mm. So we'll go round to where we've got these. So sometimes though, I have to sort of point, so I know where my fingertip is, there it is. <laughs> and now, do you know what I said earlier, look at that. There you yeah, put it in the light, you can't see it. Yeah. So if you had a floodlight there, that's what it would do. Once you get to the edge of the light and you go over side, now look at these little dots. Yeah. They're fallout. That's fallout. Mm -hmm. Unlikely to be silicon solvents, because it's a new car, but, yeah. but it's only now that you can see it. And we've got, let's put my finger there so I can find where it is. There it is. Yeah. So again, wait for the focus. So now it's focusing on the beam. <laughs> yeah. So it is an autofocus, but sometimes now. Another trick here. There we go. If I was to, so if I move down, you can't see it now. But yeah, it's going to keep coming out of focus probably. But there's a dot, now it's disappeared. There's a dot. And now the camera has stayed focused on my fingerprint. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we put masking tape on the car. Yeah. It's in our videos, so it, it, it makes it focus. Yeah. But if I come <coughs> round here and see if I can capture it again. Let's do some dots. Put my hand there so I know where I am. Let's see. So it's not going to focus, but the moment I go to an edge, is it going to focus? Oh. Yeah, struggling. So I'm going to put my hand there. And now what I'm doing is looking for any dirt and dot. No, it's not going to work. So I need a masking tape. Mm -hmm. But I think you get the idea. I mean, there's a classic here because it's got a bag there. The badge itself will it'll focus in on, and you can easily see stains, but they're yeah. just stains with the washing, where it's dried out water. But more importantly, let's capture, just once, we'll capture, say, that defect there. And then put the light in the right place. So now put the f light round, you're going to have to go around that side of the car now. It's like, yep, go on in. And now you have to bring it over more, a lot further. Come down, that's it. So you can see now how, again, I put the bulb in the middle, yeah. it disappears, but it's on the edge. Yeah. But you've only got a small circle where strip lamps are long. Thank yeah. you, John. So by having that long strip, you can now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this camera now, I'll point this down. What you're physically doing, <coughs> all you're doing by having a strip lamp, thank you, John, I can stand here and I can just scan quickly and move side to side and you're, if you pick it up without even looking properly, yeah. I can see the defects. But that also means we've got sinkage. We've got this on the surface. Now, what people probably struggle with a camera is like it was doing there. A camera is always going to try and focus on what it sees. Yeah. So if it sees that like countryside in the background, it's going to focus on that and then yeah. the surface looks perfect. The moment you focus on the surface, you see all the defects. Now, camera phones are the worst phones for that because they always focus on the reflection. Yeah. So the amount of people that show a car after it's been done or even before, flawless, and it's because it's focusing on the reflection. Yeah. If I took a shot of this and reflection now in a photograph, that would look like it's finished, mm. but it's not. So spotlights, the round lights, they definitely help see marring, swirls, buffer lines, and holograms, mm. so, or DA, micro hazing from that they would you would struggle to see that with a strip lamp but the strip lamp is almost showing you the surface which is all the fallout and all yeah. the defects as well so a combination of both which is why if i turn all the lights on with my switch here 
we've got spotlights as well, a lot brighter. So now I can stand there and I've got the spotlight and then I can angle that spotlight and now I can see down the side of the car. Mm. And of course we've got portable ones as yep. well. So I do use a, two types of light source. Now that is just a kitchen light. That's all it is, is an under kitchen, low voltage, 12 volt kitchen light. You can put one on an extension lead. I have one because mm -hmm. I took it to America. I just plug it in the mains and you can move it up and down. Now they work really good for seeing smears we saw earlier. We think there's some sort of yep. water staining. Yep. Now I do that there. I, I absolutely guarantee you can't see that now with that light. Because it's the first time we've talked about it since. Yeah. You can't see it now, can you? No. No. But we could see it with a strip uh, lamp. Yeah. Just. Mm. So it is interesting because people are detailing with a certain light source and then they, they are genuinely getting it as good as they possibly can in that yeah. light source. If you was then to bring it into another building or my building where there's different light source, we might see defects that the detailer thought is removed or didn't even know were there. Yeah. So once you understand sort of the different light source, I mean, mm. there was a time, this is probably nine years ago, eight, nine years ago, when I would take a car out in the sun, and I'm sure you've done this, John, the sun come out on the right day and you're midway at the end. The first thing you try and do is get the car outside and turn it around and keep checking it because that was the best yeah. light source. Mm -hmm. It isn't now, because a, a sun is round. Yeah. You've just seen what the round light's just yeah. done. Yeah. So this, these strip lamps is the same as having an ambient, overcast, normal, natural light where there's no round spotlight, no sun. So what we, we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna correct the car. Now, to said to you earlier, we've got two ways of correcting this. We've got the way where you do like a, the hobbyist way where they use a, a medium cut pad and a medium cut compound yep. and just really gently polish it multiple sets to make it shiny or we can fix all of these defects in the most efficient way mm. which actually from what I've taught people some people get scared because the car looks worse yeah. or the, so I say the paint looks worse before it gets better because it's the process, it's a two stage. There's a difference between a one step process and a two step, like heavy cut and a finishing. Mm. So um, it isn't that bad, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah. that bad at all. <laughs> I think you found a couple of more things that no, I did. Or... But it, it's not that bad at all. More importantly, the things I can see is it's got so quite good sinkage on the mirrors. They normally are worse. Good sinkage. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, uh, well, we can do a nice 50 50 or show. Yeah, yeah. So is the spoiler, the plastic parts, and it. It generally just wants polishing. So Suzuki of Chesterfield meet KDS's approval. <laughs> oh, oh, I could ask Jay. If Jay was on the mic, we've had a lot worse than this, haven't we? Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot worse. Mm. Um, this so is... that mark um, on the wing earlier, and I said it might be glue from the film. Is that a scratch? It looks like a scratch What's to me, yeah. Scratch, yeah. So it's not come off yeah. with the, no. the labo no. stuff, which yeah, no. the, so, uh, the So what we're going to do, we're going to clay the car. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, we're not even discuss this. I, I know. I think I know what John prefers. I think we prefer clay cloths here at KDS. Have you got a preference? Not use a cloth. I've only used bars and blocks. Really? Yeah. I'm okay. Use the cloth. This would be interesting. Then. So, so you, would you? I've used the. Is it Carbon Collective? Yeah. Or pack? Yeah. So I've used yeah, that. Okay. Um, that that probably works. Yeah. So, I like clay cloths. Do you? I'll okay. give a clay cloth. cloth okay, right. so I just, for me, <laughs> speed is efficiency. Yeah. Now, they, if you want to get picky between the two, yes, a clay cloth mars the paint more than clay bars, but it does depend what clay bar aggressiveness you've yeah. got. Yeah. Whereas clay cloths, some brands make them in different grades, but I just found clay cloths are just more aggressive. It's only to put micromar in there, it doesn't matter, we're gonna polish it. Yes, exactly. I would never say to someone, you can clay a car and it hasn't marked the car. Mm, I'd no. always say polish it, or, but you could have a light colored car, clay it, and it would be really hard to see the clay mar in, and then yeah. if you put in a product on that's got fillers, you've essentially hidden what you've done. Yeah. So the car is smooth and clean, yep. the coating's stuck on better, or the wax, whatever, and the car feels smooth and slippery. Dark color like this, it's gonna clay mark. Yeah, yeah. It's going to claim up. So this is actually a very good quality, decent paint job for a factory car. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's that bad. But we have upstairs. I was just, <laughs> yeah, no, just going to say, um, yeah. <laughs> all cars could benefit. Yes. From uh, so some 
some paint corrections. Yes. So, so um, before we do what go on says, go I just on want on. to thank Lake Country Manufacturing again for arranging this and also for John joining us again and bringing some goodies out. So yeah, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah, let's go upstairs and so see what we've got up there. Basically, before we go upstairs, there was, we've got a nice new cup, brand new, black paint, um, dark color again, with very, very different defects to this because we had the discussion earlier that our new car's defected. Yeah. Really and truthfully, everything on this car, apart from the sinkage, which is a process part of what paint, what happens to paint now, all of this is dealer-induced, transportation-induced, wash marring marks, maybe fallout. Yeah. None of this has actually got, I can see, any problems from the factory. What we're about to see is a car that's got defects from the factory, <laughs> nothing to do with washing, and, and it's actually a completely different process for why it's happened. So, should we go upstairs then? Yeah, yeah let's okay. crack on. So we're upstairs now, and I'm just gonna show Matt and John around this brand new car that we haven't washed. I said earlier that I hadn't washed this car, it's really inconvenient to bring it all the way up here, <laughs> and then we'll have to take it back down later yeah. to wash it, but it's gonna sit here for a week because we've got other work going on, but it's dirty, and we've left it dirty because I want to record, I'm actually gonna make my own video about this, so yeah. you'll, this will come out far sooner than the Lake Country video will. <laughs> We're gonna make a video on why this has defects and what they are, so more importantly, it was to leave it dirty. So, who wants to take the light? You're going to do it again, John? You've got the light man? You're the prop man? So have a quick look round, and then I'm going to turn the camera on in a minute. So this is dirty, and we have to look through the dirt. Now, it's really, really easy. I mean, some of the dirt is hilarious, because the wash prep, whoever washed this before it got driven here, is quite comical. But you can see the obvious, can't you? Yeah. Let, let, me, turn, let me turn the camera on, then. Let's... Um, Turn the screen on so I can see. And then we've got the classic rotary buffer lines. <laughs> so we can see that already. That if you move the light around, John, I'll yeah. zoom in, you can see that's it's uh, so that's factory buffer lines yeah. that this here is actually could be sandy marks. Actually, that could well be sandy marks because I've just wiped that thing. That's been away. No, <laughs> I think that is actually sandy marks from the factory. So what I'm going to do is, you have a go at that, why not? See what you can do with that. And I'm going to grab some, a cloth and IPA. I'm going to clean, clean that to see if that's sandy yeah. marks. Yeah. See if you can get used to the way it zooms in and out. Yeah, you need to go to the other side. Yeah, I do. <laughs> So, so let me go past. I'm going to, I'm going to see if it comes off or not. So it could be just dirt. No. Nope. You shine it over there, John. You see it? Do you want me? There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Is it there? I think I've got it. Yep. So that's that's sanding marks. Now there is another patch here. I want to make sure. Now, do you remember we said in the previous episode about wiping a car dirty? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, it's gonna get corrected. It's all this dirt, it doesn't really matter. I will wash this car, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so if I do that, I can really see it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna hold the camera and the light because it's sometimes a lot easier to see if I can capture. I've gotta try and remember, find, uh -oh. There we go. Yep, I'll get it down underneath, and you can see that's tricky there. It's going to be really It's good. in a weird position for a camera, but it's so no. easy to see. That's all right. So if you hold the light there, then, and let me put my hand there. You can see what I'm going to do. There you go. So what we need is to find out now that is left over. Yeah. Sandy marks. And I could probably adjust the white balance now. Now you'll see why I've got this all exposure, shall I say. What's this? As I turn the exposure up and down, and I get in close and get steady, you can just about pick up. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to adjust the exposure now to the right. You can see that that's dull along that edge. 
So, yeah, we have sanding marks there. And as we go down the car, we've got the, the same sort of buffer trowels. I mean, ignore all the hand marks now. <laughs> Up over here, Matt, if you put the light over there, yes, it, you can see this has all basically got buffer trowels. I think mean, if I come <coughs> around there, you don't even have to move. You can see there's some sort of marring and hazing, mm -hmm. and there is. But now, when we turn that light off, if you do that now, turn the light off and I look at the strip lamps, you'll better see them when I zoom in. The clarity of the paint and the flatness is a lot better. Yeah. Because it's sanded and polished at the factory. Yep. So as we carry on going around, you get the light again. I think there was some, I mean, some appalling washing, that's oh, it. <laughs> but I'm ignoring the washing yeah. and looking through, one of this camera, you can see that all the different sort of buffer lines and holograms all around the car. So this has been sanded at the factory to give it an improvement to the finish. This isn't dead flat. <clears throat> Nowhere near is this dead flat, this, this surface. But it's got buffer lines over the surface. Now, mm. let's see if we can capture this here. I'm going to have to have someone's hand fingers in there. So you've just got to put your fingers about there. Can you see where my fingerprints are? Yeah. I don't want that light. Well, you you light well, use, no, I'll show you why that light's not the very good light in a minute. So when I zoom in here, and let's get the get a lot <laughs> brighter. That's too far. I'm going to turn it down a little bit because there's a delay when the camera does its exposure. So as you can see, you can see there, right. So again, what I said, in the middle of the bulb, you can't see yeah. the defect. When it goes to one side, the other side, you can see basically a pigtail which runs oh, all right the now. way down the bonnet. Now, if you put the, this will be very difficult to do, Matt, if you try and put the light in the, that's it, you add it then. So come back a bit, that's it. If I move that down, it's gonna be very difficult to pick up. But there is the pigtail there. Yeah, you, yeah. But it depends on the exposure as Just I've changed it. it. So again, in the middle of the bulb, you can't see it. As I mm -hmm. turn the balance up, you can start seeing lots more pigtails there. Can you see them? Can yep. you just see the just see, yeah, remains yeah. Yep. as I adjust the camera? So we can see actually more than what our eye can see there. I'll turn that down. So basically, <coughs> I'll stop this one. I'll stop this recording. I'll put that down out of the way for us. Yeah. So hopefully you might have noticed there is quite a few Oh, yeah. But now sure. you're starting to use the strip lamps. Yeah. <coughs> if I put the metal halide lights on, or the other spots which are turned around, you wouldn't see it. Mm. So what we're doing now, I'm standing here and I'm scanning across, and there is actually a scratch line there, look. Down there? Yep. You can see all the way down there, can't you? Yeah. Yep. Come Let me have a look. A scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. You try capturing that. Here, yeah, you try capturing that with the spotlight, with your handheld light yeah. now. Yeah, I know, So I'm going to say now, PPF installed with a spotlight is the easiest way to install PPF. The second easiest is with a floodlight, one big box light. Strip lamps show every single defect and bit of dirt and deviation or crow's feet, as they call it, yeah. or install marks in these strip lamps like this. So I have, it's buried over the back, we're not going to uh, sort of document it. I have an old painter's trestle that used to have um, ceramic heated lamps, or like, like infrared lamps, all on a, like a branch. Mm. I've now got these lights on it with a, an adjustment boom, so I can wheel it around the car, lay yeah. it over the car. It's more for PPF, really. But yeah, there is, um, the more you look with the, the strip lamp, I can see defects, but there's not as many defects as there is on your car on the surface. But this has been rough polished, as far as I've said, it wants washing, cleaning, then polishing with a dual action random orbital polisher, and then um, finish it off. So pass back the light, I just want to, I'm sure. Yeah, I know where the light, I know where the scratch is now, and I can see it, but the thing that's easier. I mean, this here, if I draw a circle around my finger, mm -hmm. have a look at that strip lamp there, a bit of etching, bird poo etching. Oh yeah. How yeah. easy that is to see with oh, a strip yeah. lamp. Yeah. So we're now going to go and polish your car with strip lamps <laughs> and these bulbs, who are going to use them.
bit of each really. Essentially, I'd polish this in exactly the same way as I'd polish your car. Because yeah. we talked about earlier, all it is in the end, it's, it's all in the top surface of the clear coat. Some, you know, one micron, two microns thick, maybe three or four, depends on what yeah. type of correction you're doing. And it's black as well. So I'm going to end up doing the exact same polishing process I would on this. But more importantly, Jay knows more about this car, but it's a one of one car. I was talking to you earlier about mm -hmm. it. It's been commissioned from one of the Aston Martin dealerships. It's hand painted, like they all are. It's been hand worked. Essentially, this has got more defects wrong with this car. Uh, 160, I'm guessing 160. Jay's going up, I don't know what this was, but it's a really irrelevant. It's a plus nearly 200,000 pound car. How, how much was your car? I don't know. It's on the wall before it's probably less than, <laughs> All right. it's probably 20, less than 20 grand. Yeah, it's really, exactly. 10 of mine for yeah. this. Well, yeah. I suppose paint's paint, isn't it? Yeah, so this is still got insane. defect. And more importantly, people think, and my parents used to do it, my friends, and anyone that knows not a lot about detail that comes as a customer, we show them around their car. <laughs> if they've got a cheap, low end family car and we show them defects, they're always like, oh, it's a cheap car. I bet your Ferrari, I bet the Lamborghini, I bet Aston Martin, they have no defects and we just laugh and go, they're the worst. Yeah. Mm. People think as you pay more money, the paint becomes better. Yeah, right. But yeah. I've always said, a human's what ruins the paint. Yeah. The irony is because I'm going to polish the paint. The funny here. thing is that you mentioned the cheap family car, it's still probably the second most expensive thing you've ever had in your life. And yeah. people just, <laughs> but people yeah. care more about the flat screen on the wall than they do about the car. Yeah, paint. but <laughs> more importantly, over the years of experience, I've found far more defects in plus 200,000 plus, you know, cars than I would in a 20,000 pound car. We've always said, if you just go and buy yourself a Volkswagen Golf, a Skoda, a Seat, something like that, you're like, normally we go around it and go, right, do you know what? It's a light colored car. This needs no correction. Yeah. We can coat it. And it's only when you get, it doesn't matter. I don't know if we've ever had a hand painted supercar in it. No, Joe's going, no. Not. We've <laughs> never had a single supercar, <laughs> high value car, Bentley, Rolls Royce, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't have to be a supercar, it's a high expensive yeah. car. And you find sandy marks. I like assume that's though because it is hand painted Correct. and there is the human element Correct. in there, so yeah. you are yeah. going to get, whereas mine's on a production line in a Japanese factory. I always say robots don't have yeah. fallout with their missus, no. they don't have an argument, they're programmed to do something over and over again. A car yeah. through spray <laughs> and you get different, so. different levels of quality from different human beings yeah. and people's expectations. So, yeah, unfortunately, hand painted cars are worse, and this isn't anywhere near as bad as we've seen for one of these. <laughs> this is far from the worst. <laughs> I remember the video you did a while ago, was it a Supra? There's a red car you had, yeah, brand new. That's and not it. that bad, but you that shouldn't be okay. Yeah. On yeah. 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 No, we've, we've never documented some, because we, we didn't want to upset a certain brand. <laughs> we've had other versions, earlier models of these sort of cars, and you're like, Damn. I mean, I can give you. I can probably find some B-roll footage of some. The car's completely matte. There's it, an Instagram post. Sorry. Is there? On, on the, the last black V8 Avanti road in before and after. Yeah. It was like brown <coughs> and white. Yeah. They're so sad. So this one is surprisingly void at the moment of sanding marks, but it has a lot of buffer lines. You know, normally have buffer lines, bad marring. Normally still got the marks left over from dirt removed and still got the rotary buffer lines, yeah. yeah. So it's got the lot. But no, it's a hand, it's a brand new car. It's done 200 miles, driven to us. They've been washed once at the dealer. We will do our own video, washing, you know, washing the car, but more importantly, just polishing it really how to correct it. And actually how it's not that hard to fix what's wrong with this. Yeah. Mm. But it'd be the same process as what we're gonna do with your car. Cool. So there are it then guys, that's the inspection done both on my car and this, yeah, wonderful Aston Martin here, so... Just Do you want to swap? You. Do you want to swap? Yeah. So definitely, I'm taking this back on the M1, so be sure to subscribe to Lake Country's channel as I'll put a link in the description below, and at some point in the future, it might be a few months away when Jay gets around yes. to editing it, <laughs> you will see this car on there, so yeah, thanks very much to Kelly for doing the inspection and Lake Country for organising this, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you next week when we make some polishing.